Well, welcome back. Uh, my name is uh, Paul Spears, and this is another session of Oasis Digital's kind of curriculum planning. Uh, oftentimes, we, we get together and meet to discuss uh, just Angular and ad Angular adjacent topics, usually in the context of our Angular curriculum. And so we decided to experimentally just start hitting record before we start uh, working on these, just to see what happens, see what kind of information we capture, and see if there's like more ways we can impact the community with the, the thoughts that we kind of kick around even within our team. And so just real quick, we're going to go ahead and do introductions, and then uh, everything else will be totally unscripted. We're just going to try and figure out what we want to work on and talk about, and just start doing it. So, Chris? Chris Hardy. Hi, I'm John Bauer. Kyle Cordes. And if you're interested in following up, uh, we have our, anyone's uh, Twitter handles that are interested in, in uh, presenting those in the description for the video. Okay, so. I believe we're required by law to say you have to like and subscribe. Oh, I there you go. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> to the microscopic flow of content. Sure, do that. Okay, so let's do it. I actually, I, I did cheat a little bit, and I looked at what has, <laughs> what was in master and what our branches were before sitting down. And Kyle, I see a new commit in master. Tell me about this commit. First, I'm going to point out you're missing on the video, unless you can change the aspect ratio of that thing up there. we got to, like, pivot here, or else they're going to hear, like, off, off screen uh, people are going to be talking, and uh, on screen people will be, like, sitting there. Uh-oh. Uh you're just going to cheat it to cut me off? No, that, that doesn't just, rotate. Just a little. It doesn't rotate. All right. It's oh, a different kind of mount. Everything rotates if you push it. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll, I'll block Chris here. Uh, that's fine. All right. That's really John's in more danger. OK. So yeah, you, you saw that go in, did yeah, you? Yeah. What, what, why is there a commit for Svelte? Why is Svelte mentioned in our Angular curriculum? <laughs> So, yeah, okay, the reason there's a, just, okay, there's no Svelte in our Angular curriculum. So, so everybody, you know, boo, disappointment. Okay. So the reason there's a little bit of Svelte in the repository is that we have preparation instructions that we send out a link to, publish on, like, like an unpublished, or a published but unlinked web page for people that are, uh, you know, about to attend the class. And that includes, like, a little widget. It's kind of a little thing where you type in some data as part of the process of getting into the class. And so it's, it's a static page. It's an intentionally static page when it's a render on any browser, anywhere, blah, blah. And it needs this little tiny bit of dynamic content in the middle of a static page. So in the, in the bad old days, we did that with AngularJS, which is really well suited to do a little bit of Angular in the middle of a static page. And if we're a little bit more patient, Angular Elements will be perfectly well suited to do that. But at the moment I set this up, like a year ago, maybe less than a year ago, Svelte was already well suited to put a little dynamic widget in the middle of a static page, and Angular Elements was just a little bit too rough. So that's why. Okay, so let's see. I, don't, I actually want to see this thing. So uh, I'm inside the ABC. Looks like I need to go a step higher. Yeah, you'll have to go up, up one, and up one, and down into prep. And it, I mean, it's a, it's a, I mean, it's like a kind of a full-fledged project. It has like prettier setup and everything. Well, you could open that prep. Well, actually, it might work if you don't. Yeah, so there's this little repository, and there's, this is it. There is one. There's right. a... Do you, do you have any recommendations here? Should we... Uh... Uh, well, if you press search marketplace, uh, it probably... Uh, yeah, see the one that says oh, language support that. for VS Code? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and all it's going to do is give you a little bit better syntax highlighting, which is fine. Um, and, it, and it wouldn't even matter for looking at the code. So how much should the uh, instructors have to care about this, if at all? As far as I know, no instructor ever has to care about this at all. This is used by our like you know, execution team that gets you know gets people to get a ticket and make it to a class and so on. It has nothing to do with with okay. instructing the class. But Still, yeah, it just feels like the well, the, the camel's nose in the tent here of like. Well, I mean, uh, we we don't have we don't do spoilers or pre-announcements, but there is a possibility if if we had customers contact us and said, you know, teach me the spells, we would we would definitely find a way to do that. Cool. We should probably get on Angular. Yeah. All right. So we had left off on the last meeting with wrapping up some changes with the uh, the Cypress tests. Oh now, yeah. Now I know I know Luke has worked on that some, uh, but typically I like to give attention to these branches from the bottom up. So unless there's like something in particular that folks really want to like call out and work on, we'll just kind of do our normal flow. Lead the way. All right. Um, well, I think actually the Cypress branch 
still has the oldest history, so we'll just keep rolling with that. Um, now, I, Luke had done a bunch of work. We, when we left off, we had figured out a way how to get... So, John, you're going to love this. You weren't here. Um, <laughs> me that that means you won't love this. <laughs> yeah. Let me translate that, that for you. You life. will not love this. <laughs> so we found out uh, that... Like we, we figured out like how to configure Cypress to say, please go run some tests that live somewhere other than in the Cypress primary directory. Um, so now we have inside each numbered step, rather than like a top level collection of them, we have an E to E folder and a Cypress folder. That way we can kind of keep the protractor tests and add the Cypress tests. But the challenge is if you look at these two spec files side by side, you see, uh, this is not this is not the file. Let's try that again. All right. So if you look at these side by side, they both use the wor words like describe and it, but they're not the same describe and it because the Cypress tests uh, they use um, a, a Mocha as their assertion language, yet Protractor uses Jasmine, mm -hmm. and so we had to like find a way to like trick the editor into using the right one for the right spot. Um, took us a long time, but we finally figured out like what the right invocation is, and what you essentially have to do is you need a separate TS config, one for each project type, that that inherits. It will actually inherit from the root, but it mostly just comes in and it will override the types section for the corresponding kind of, of project. So why wasn't it working over here? Uh, I haven't done an NPM install to pick up oh, the Mocha right. tests. Because we, we worked on a different machine. You know, we, should, we should banter about that for a minute. Some of our watchers might actually care. We intentionally have like shared machines where we work on this and move back and forth just so that we perpetually get reminded of what our students have to go to to get up and running to make sure we don't ever get where it's like, well, it's easy for me because I set up my computer in, you know, 2014 and it's worked perfectly since. So do you need to get, uh, open up the ABC directory? From, like, can uh, you I, have the ABC I, as a top I, level in order for drill to work? Uh, that is a good question. We will find out shortly. Okay. Well, I think that that VS Code directory is only respected at the folder you have open. So if you want the full experience, you really ought to open ABC. But the TS config, like, does multi-root now. I think no, there's not a guarantee. It is only a think. So I was actually really amazed when we first got this to work that I could come over here, see yes that this is in fact pulling from Jasmine, and that this is in fact pulling from Mocha, and it just somehow auto magically works. Um, so that that was pretty cool getting that working. Um, but moving beyond that though. Luke was smart enough to actually try like running the running and compiling the code after the fact, and he was finding that this whole app path thing wasn't working as advertised. I saw that, but his solution is unfortunately unacceptable. Probably, I haven't had a chance to to look at it. Um, the reason why is if you don't ever say import or export, it doesn't consider it a module, mm -hmm. and so it like tries to cross them together and says these guys are stepping on each other. So I think what we're going to have to do is find a way to either tell it their modules in some general way or like use an import or export. I mean, if, if we just, we can export a thing but not actually import it also, right? So I think, for example, if you did a bulk search and replace of all of this and you made them all say export const app path for no good reason, as you're saying, I think that would fix it. Because literally, any time, any export or import at all, and it switches it to module mode. Yeah. Um, but I'm not going to do that. Hopefully, Luke can come back and watch this recording and, and keep rolling with this effort you and make that do change. some multi-cursor search and replace, uh, am, whiz, bang, razzle, dazzle, magic. I am, I am magic. not feeling a, a, a search and replace for the, well, Okay, fine. <laughs> I mean, I think, I think you could do a search and replace for this string right here with the word export. And then you could do a search and replace for this line and you can apply that only to files named spec, and I think you I mean, can get you it. Find that line outside of the spec. I hope not. Yeah. Yeah, and we can it, just, it already yeah. is. Look, yeah. there it is. And we can always just review the diff to make sure we don't 
you know, screw ourselves up. All right, so we'll replace that with the word export with a space, maybe. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because I grabbed it. And yeah, yeah. So this is my operating theory that this works. By the way, did you start your uh, your yarn npm whatever? Um, I mean, you said I've already npm installed. Yeah, yarn, yarn installed. And don't worry about reindenting because we have a uh, we have a, uh, a package script that runs prettier on all the files, so we can just bulk we can bulk fix all that. Yeah. Um, so uh, and that'll yeah. clean up extra lines at the end and so on. Yeah. All right, I just want to replace that with nothing, right? Yeah. So this is a Cypress thing? That so, yes, yeah, so let me give you some more context. Um, one of the characteristics that we had in the E to E tests were that they described themselves and what they were doing and, like, navigated to the page at, to test based upon the name of the folder that they were in. And it couldn't be hard coded because we rename and reorder and change up way too much for us to hard code those values. They need to derive from where they live. In Protractor, that wasn't a problem because in Protractor, this stuff is running inside Node, which has access to the file system. In Cypress, you're running in the browser where you don't have access to the file system. Oh, okay. And so we had to come up with a different mechanism to achieve that. Uh, as it turns out, uh, Let's see, it would be Webpack by way of uh, Cypress actually exposes the app path that was used to compile the module that you're in. And so, like, through, through sheer luck, we were basically able to, to retain that feature thanks to a feature in Webpack that was re-exported through Cypress. And so we're able to know the name of, uh, of the path of this file at runtime thanks to that. Uh, however, there was some complication. I didn't actually get a chance to fully understand that complication, but I, what, do you remember what exactly the problem was that Luke was experiencing? I th well, I didn't see it happen, but my understanding is that if you have non-module files, then they're all compiled as if they're just all the same code mashed together. And so you have two so cons all had the with same the same name, error. Yeah. Whereas if you have separate yeah. modules, they can all have their own content. So, the, so he ran into it the second he did more than one example. Right. We only we stopped doing one example. Yeah. When he went to add a second one, he yeah. ran into a problem. Yeah. But here, by making it a module, it will actually scope them separately. Okay. So that they each have their own, and they're not using the same app path. All right. And so that should actually take care of it. Um, we're going to want, want to run that tool. Let's see, do we want to do that now, or do we want to push that off to work to do after So what, what tool? Your, uh, the tool to auto it? Do I'll, you happen to know yeah, that let's, let's, let's try that, because yeah, you know what? I have noticed that uh, some folks have struggled to get changes that pass lint and compiling the first time they push. Mm -hmm. And I realize that's probably because I have tragically and utterly failed to write down or tell anyone how easy it is to run that stuff in your own machine <laughs> first. So if you go into the ABC directory here, I guess we should say for the sake of any viewers, sorry, this part is not published. So this is the machinery we use to make the published Angular Bootcamp examples. So the output of this is published, and of course we use even more of it in class, but this stuff is like our thing, so yeah. sorry. Um, okay, so if you just uh, take a look over here at the, the package JSON, and uh, it should be somewhat, I look at the other one in ABC, yeah. Oh, I love that little feature, isn't that awesome? How are, how are we on Angular 7 in here? Are you sure you're in the... Oh, because this is an ancient I'm, I'm branch. On, yeah, the branch is pretty old. We're going to eventually exploit <laughs> it and rebase it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, so in the scripts, let's see if we can spot what we need. So there is a prettier colon fix. So if you just do a yarn run prettier fix or yarn prettier fix, I think that will do the thing you need. Appears to be doing its doing a lot of something. Oh, I think it mentions every file it looks at. Not, yeah. not, not, it not does. It I doesn't mean it's changing them all. Yeah. Yeah. So why does Cypress run in the browser instead of the So Cypress has a completely different paradigm for how it does things. 
it, uh, something's not right here with my zoom level, one second. So Cypress, it, uh, the framework itself is actually a JavaScript framework that they, they kind of do all kinds of craziness to be able to, um, kind of like tie more closely to the event loop and they're able to actually wrap themselves around how the browser would normally work to give themselves more fine-grained hooks and controls over how it's operated whereas protractor only has access to the the external api that the chrome team provides you the trade-off is that you're you're in a much more intimate relationship with the browser when using cypress so it is not as truly end-to-end -end. but the trade-off is the ergonomics are astoundingly it's way better. easier so, um, so the cypress test code is actually running in the same browser, browser code browser. It's, it's browser code yes app. Yeah, as opposed to bringing a node program like reaching with this long floppy stick to right. point at your browser, it's code running inside the same page. But the, the ergonomics are like amazingly worth it. Yeah, it's like it is end to end enough that I don't care about the yeah. last five percent. Right. Um, Although I think there's a few apps out there where you really need sure. Them. I'm like on my. Podcast, You're actually working on one. <laughs> I, I have one right now where like yeah. the video uh, when you're using their UI mm. and you and you're running video. Because it's making like multiple DOM snapshots, if you have like auto playing video, yeah. it can get into a state where it's like simultaneously playing all the videos at once. So are you saying, in one of the first few projects you've tried <laughs> to use it at scale, you ran into the edge to the edge? <laughs> but but working around like the ergonomics are still so good that it's worth spending some time working around. See, it. Okay, that was, okay, yeah. yeah. So while I was away, what happened? Um, it went and it changed all of the spec files. Did for, it, change, did it change them acceptably? So I'm still looking here. So here is fixing indent level of all of them. Yeah, let's start with that. That's a good idea. Yes, but also we're trying to we're trying to verify it fixed the white space. So yeah, some of each. Yeah. I have a, I have a prettier question. If anyone here in the room knows, um, is there any way to make it or ask it to manage the blank lines between things more itself? Because those still feel like they're just like an arbitrary, whatever a particular de developer did on that Tuesday. Um, like it'd be great if like if if like our it blocks were either always spaced or always not spaced, um, instead of being just like however somebody yeah, thought that day. Um, I mean, I'm at risk of someone saying you know pull request welcome. But, well, what's uh, really great is that, like, you know, and if you folks online know, feel free to share right. us online. <laughs> Please, yes, tweet, tweet us, at us. There's a uh, there's an expression I've heard in a few podcasts, uh, don't at me, bro. Uh, <laughs> it's used when making a controversial statement for which the person prefers not to receive feedback, but we definitely want <laughs> feedback. <laughs> so did, did, did it work? Did you try running it? I did not, but I want to capture this before I okay. before I move on. Oh, I see. We'll yeah. Later. Let's <laughs> yeah. Move on to the next one. Um, <laughs> famously, uh, Don Newth who used to say that the code examples in his books. He would say, like, "I have only proven it is correct, not actually tested it." <laughs> <laughs> All right, before I run this, though, so I'm actually going to squash and rebase it also. Because there's another, yeah. Well, well, why don't we try to get it running first? Uh, so the latest version of Source Tree is still horribly bugged. Yeah. It's a completely different machine, so now we know it's not the other machine. Hmm. Is there any way to? Well, ah, ooh. But that was like last week, and the, the internet moves fast. Maybe you bring your life. Okay. So we had to recover from a crash there. Sorry for anyone if there was a rough cut in here. All right, so hopefully, so I, I think I remember you can trigger this bug by like selecting a range of commits. Let's try not to do that. But I'm about to have to do that in order to do a squash rebase. Uh, just right yeah. click on your well, target. Right. One. I think that was yeah. okay. And then, and then, didn't. And then mm -hmm. click uh, rebase children of that interactively. Yeah, that, that's working. Okay. And then uh, do whatever you're doing here. Yeah. So for those online. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Oh no, that is that is the opposite of cool. <laughs> No, I that is one of the one of the few features of this I'm really that? good. That it keeps doing that? Oh, you mean that the that it window shrinks? Yeah. yeah. I thought you were just saying the button was cool. <laughs> no, the, the reset so you're like chancing the button with the oh, screen. Yeah, the button. Like if you like a little button that's like flying around the screen, you gotta like catch it. Ah. For those watching, um, we actually don't do a like the PR merge based pattern of history management. 
um, like send me a message. I'll send you a long video detailing exactly what we do and why. Um, but it's actually squash rebase that we that we prefer. So that's what I'm doing here. Uh, so let's see. Message for this like for now. Like this is still a temporary message. Uh, and it's still just all about getting Cypress up and going. So, so should we say people are welcome to flame us on Twitter if they see our practices and find them objectionable? Sure. Now hopefully it doesn't crash. If it does, we just got to go command line. All right, there we go. So now and we rebase. <laughs> <laughs> There's no way this is gonna work. It's been too long. Something's gonna. Oh. 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 oh but these are permission denied. Oh, yeah. These are. So this is what, what this is what you get when you're using Windows Source Tree and VS Code. Oh. oh and you try and do a rebase. Why did it do, do that? The Angular the more service enabled still. Yes. Because I. Got rid of that, and I haven't had VS Code problems as much. Really? Yeah. Now you have to close. Okay, so there. you got to get rid of your merge conflicts first. Yeah, if you go to files, oh, oh, then you just do a you did a rebase support, right? I did, but then I successfully rebased it. Said, yeah, you're good, but you have merge conflicts now oh. from the rebase itself. Oh, 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 wow. And so that is in package JSON. And so what is the nature of the problem here? So here he added Cypress at the oh. same time copy files version change. Well, then, yeah, okay. We'll just accept both changes. And then kill the duplicate copy files. And then you will have to do a yarn. To get my package. A yarn and maybe yarn even a yarn one. upgrade to make sure you're running the, getting the right versions. And then yarn lock on this one, just accept either one but not the other. Or you could just delete the file if you had to. Because so it just won't matter. I usually do. Yeah, you want to yarn and maybe yarn upgrade or something. Oh, yeah, yeah, you're on, you're on yarn. And then, uh, what does yarn upgrade do? So that oh, means um, it yeah. actually picked up that I had multiple things in here that were going to. Yeah, you're going to have to maybe just delete the file. You can't do it over there. You can do it from down here, though. You can just, down here, you can just Dell or RM or whatever. Um, so yarn upgrade or NPM upgrade mm -hmm. says. Take all of my dependencies and upgrade them within the range of whatever the little spec allows, but oh, also okay. reach through to all the transitive dependencies and upgrade all of those. Okay. And so, since that yarn lock like locks in transitive dependency versions, it kind of it actually somewhere along the way it suddenly became important to do that upgrade from time to time. And like, I don't think anyone knows. So I think there's a lot of projects that are like inadvertently locked into old versions of transitive dependencies. Yeah, but it's that, really that's still okay so long as the packages that brought in those transitive dependencies declare their range tightly enough. It'll auto force an upgrade. Yeah, when it crosses a certain boundary. Yeah, except like that assumes that it's okay right. to stay on old versions unless you know you need to upgrade. But I think that's actually a like I think there are there are times when there's like a security issue. And they make sure. a big noise about it, right? But sure. I think there are other people that just occasionally notice problems in their packages and fix them without, you know, maybe being quite announcing it as like. And so I, I think that it's actually kind of risky to just like stay behind in sure. old versions. You're you're probably skipping important updates. Yeah. Maybe while this runs, we should hawk our uh, our governance services for. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> We have a lot less fun when we're doing governance, but we are somewhat good. <laughs> so wait, what's this thing doing right now? So right now it's doing a new yarn installation here. Okay. Uh, I think you may have had enough. Oh, Cypress in of itself is kind of a big enough. Oh, because Cypress thing. was. Yeah. yeah. We had we we had we had installed after we did Cypress. So after we switched to this branch. So is Cypress the one that like? Oh, but then, the then, then I installed world? after we. Well, no, we haven't rebased either. Hmm. We're we're getting we're now actually downloading the. Did you install when we were looking at master because you wanted to play with the stealth thing for a minute? Yeah, I don't know. So this is the first time we're getting. I what? think I think we're getting new versions of Angular right now. Is that broken? Where it says all the gRPC. What's a gRPC? And by the way, it's acceptable if you're in the back row to use Google to appear to be the smartest person in the world in the no, room. It's so. taking me a second to think about it. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> it's a, I think it's an open source, uh, no procedure call. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> All right. So that's done. So that should have generated our. So this should be. Long. 
So now they can so just add that. Three of conflict markers. Okay. All right. Now so we then can... we continue our rebase. What is pull to continue it? I think commit to do it. Uh, yeah, there's several buttons no. that trigger the okay. prompt. Okay. So, to, so okay, so we're in theory clean on top of. Yep. So we got master and cypress test is now one on top of it. So let's let's take a quick look here. What the file you're on? Yeah. Let's just look. Yeah, I, I think things. that was just an Aaron. Aaron uh, an errand commit from yeah like you could like hit reverse hunk on yeah. that because there's no reason to bring that in okay then what right, else so let's see if my control click will actually work here all right it did no it did not <laughs> all right so can you bring this be back so we uh, want to just like look at that commit a little more so we're trying to just look at that commit oh, we yeah. can't look at the net changes though because of the current bug in in source tree well, no that is the net changes no because i wanted to also include the my any reverts that way, like I'm always just one little revert. Yeah, it'll sure. be fine. Okay, let's just like click this through. This is messing with my yeah. flow, man. Let's just like look through these real quick then. All right, so package yeah, that that is okay. Added Cypress. Okay, and then what did we do here? Oh yeah, we weren't actually naming our our tests. Oh, okay, some were just Dots named spec. spec. Yes. Yeah. Okay, but yeah, that makes sense then. Okay, that, that's kind of good. And so here on the eighth, mm. we're removing the top level Jasmine because we needed to push it down a layer when we want it. Okay. And then that's just picking up. Yep. <clears throat> that, that we've this already reverted this one. Reverted. Here we Cypress added a top-level config. config for Cypress. Yeah. And oh, but then we customized that line three. Is we had to customize line three and four. Yeah. And that's what. Yeah. So John, you you might actually care about this for project work. If you want to change how Cypress like default looks around for tests, okay. these two files are what you're looking for. Are these two lines? Okay. Okay. Uh, and then we have our spec and TS config files. The TS configs are just like literally a copy of the same file a thousand more times. Right? I should be, yeah. So. Now I have a question about that copy of the file. Mm -hmm. I'm really surprised in that TS config JSON that it doesn't have to say it like extends another one or anything. Is that just because there's very few settings that even matter? That's a good question. I expected to see the extends as well. Yeah. Um, Maybe we'll have to yeah. Luke investigate that. Yeah, I think so. The other thing I'm surprised in that JSON is that line 11 indicates this has not been like pretty prettier formatted. Does our is our prettier settings set to ignore JSON files? We can go edit our prettier settings to make it include JSON files. Let's not go down that route. Just okay. Yet. Because it, I'm saying, but we should before this is merged because it's all a bunch of JSON files. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, so we think this looks rightish. Yeah. Now I've not actually inspected the contents of the test, the tests themselves yet. Oh. Um, so like we'll. Yeah. We want to do that before yeah. we actually perform the merge. Yeah, and actually, you know, we got to put a marker in something. You can bring right back up the list of files and folders. Maybe John will have an idea on this. Uh, in the directory structure, until recently, like Protractor was our world. Mm -hmm. And so we called the thing E2E, and that had our Protractor in it. Yeah, I. I, I know where you're going. I, I thought that as yeah. soon as I saw the structure. I'm thinking know. that. I yeah. didn't know if there was something like kind of. Because Protractor is still kind of baked into CLI, right? I mean, yeah, so it's so the default. It's default. Is what people are kind of used to seeing. That's kind of why I thought you left. But it the there, rest of the world has run away to Cypress so fast. Well, then let's rename them all Protractor. I mean, I thought about yeah. That's so. One idea was to name them like, or the other idea was to name them E2E dash Protractor and E2E dash Cypress. That was an idea. Furthermore, when you get yeah. NX, you get yeah. Cypress by default. Yeah. And I think some I think some of the like React starter yeah. kits drop you into Cypress by default, and Svelte Sapper drops you Cypress by default. So really, we need to reverse them. We need to make E2E be Cypress, <laughs> and then need a Protractor be the new one off. That happens. <laughs> um, so what? I mean, we could ask Luke to actually do the renames. We'll sure. just talk about it here. We don't have to actually like mess with it here because it's kind of a pain to do a bulk folder rename. Mm -hmm. um, although I think I could write a fine command for it. Um, what do you think about like E2E dash Cypress and E2E dash Protractor? I like that. Yeah, because that's also going to help messaging with the uh, students who like go back to review after the fact. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. and because that way, if people say that way, we can like re generically refer to it as the E2E code, mm -hmm. and people will be like, oh yeah. Yeah, I see. There's two kinds of E2E code. Because I really don't want like, when people are, you know, some of our students are literally, like, this is their first front-end work they have ever done. I mean, not, not many, but some it is. And so yeah. we don't want yeah. them to be like, which files should I care about? Is this part of the application? Yeah. 
they're going to be starting yeah. a new project right. and just have a Cypress and a Protractor filter in there. Yeah. OK, so we'll have, have maybe I'll look through the rename E2E Cypress, E2E Protractor. OK, so what do we got? Uh, yeah, I think everything else is just a matter of more thoroughly looking at the actual contents of the test. Well, let's tr let's try to compile the whole the whole thing. Let me, let, me, sure. let me show you the bits that I probably should have made more prominent. You you bring up the, the, it, it's the same TS config file in each. In each yeah, folder. because the rules for TS config are look right. at the one in the and folder you're in, then look up, and there there is no like. When you're running the compiler, you can like have multiple ones that have different subsets of files they look at, but the IDE doesn't know anything about that. The IDE is just strictly 100% right. look at where I am and then look up. And it has to be this exact name. There's no way to configure that name. Yeah. Right. And so we end up with like a whole bunch of TS. It's, it's, it's definitely going to be a thing to explain in class. But if you think about it, like that also makes sense whenever it comes time to like ship each of these off as individual repos. Yeah. Because in the context of one repo, you're going to get. Yeah, that's interesting. Actually, within since we export them as like Angular CLI projects, I wonder if mm -hmm. we will even include the Cypress code because Angular CLI ships with Protractor support, not Cypress support. Is there any considerations that we need to look at for how we ship that? I mean, I if we want to me. ship the Cypress, we'd have to go ahead and. Have not ship just a default CLI project, but one that has, has that Cypress has added as a package, which I don't I don't think is terrible. I mean, it's pretty easy, right? I think, I think yeah, so. yeah, it's pretty yeah. easy at Cypress. So we could auto generate seventy, auto generate run an E two E two S seventy more Cypress projects. Well, that doesn't have to be a Cypress project. Well, I mean projects that use Cypress. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I meant. Okay, I'll take a look at the scripts, and there's some interesting worthwhile scripts to know about in here that I use all the time. So you see. Those three compile lines, uh, 53, 4, and 5, the way the naming structure works, you see line 52? Line 52 knows to sequentially run those three things. The cool thing is, if you wanted to, you could actually change the run S to a run P, and it would concurrently run those three things, <laughs> which is not a bad idea, except that if errors come out, you'll get errors interleaving out in your output from multiple steps. Um, but see how line 54, see what line 54 is doing, right? Yep. So I think this means that we really need to have a compile Cypress, right? So we need to like uh, after like dupe line 54, and we'll have we'll have to make a ts config a ts config dot Cypress if we don't already have one. We might have already made one. Um, so so John, this is that mechanism that, that I was saying that we wish we had in the IDE, which is that. You can run the compiler, point it at tsconfig, and that tsconfig can describe what subset of all the files it tries to compile. And then when you say no emit, it will not actually send, it, like, it won't write any code out, but so, it, will, it will verify. So basically, line 53 means make sure all of our app code throughout all of our examples compiles without error. But I don't, I don't actually think that we're supposed to be doing this. Because the way you do TypeScript with Cypress is that it actually compiles it on the fly for you. Well, that's the case for all of our Angular code also. This just verifies the, this. So this oh, gets so just to okay. So this gets executed by the CI mm -hmm. to make sure that we don't accidentally put code in that doesn't compile. But if we just execute the test, it will also verify this as a side effect. That is true, but I have found it quite valuable that this thing gives errors sooner and more clearly. Because sure. what you're what you're saying is true of lines. It's true of the other things. Three things also, right? Because yes. like our yeah. apps yeah. would not run if they had compiler errors, but like, you know, they wouldn't AOT if they had compiler errors, but this this has still been useful. Um, also, I think we're going to, oh, this is gross. We're going to have so many renames here. Because basi basically, now that there's two popular, uh, okay, so now I think you need to bring this up con next to one of your Cypress uh, files, and we'll have to, like, tweak it to do the right thing. One of these, is that what you're saying? One of the Cypress yeah, I'm trying to figure out what we how to, how we need to reconcile. Yeah, so I think it's just that we replace what we had in replace in Jasmine with Cypress. In, in Jasmine with Cypress. And so now line 14 it needs to be written in such a way things. that it will only pick up the right thing. So like star slash Cypress slash something, maybe. How's that? Uh, mm, why don't you, I, I would keep it, keep it lighter for now, and I would do, 
I wouldn't do star star because star star potentially makes it look down into many directories. I think just star slash will be enough. And then I think line 15 goes away. Um, and then the excludes are fine as they are. I mean, this might be good enough. This might work. It turns out that the like the output path becomes irrelevant. You should change the cypress, but it, it, because when we run it, we're not with no emit. OK, I got to admit, I am incredibly curious if this is going to work. <laughs> uh, so what do we call it again? It was compile. Well, if you want to compile, in Cypress. yeah, you can do them one at a time. Or you can just shoot, you know, shoot the whole thing off at once. Done. I, that worked too quickly. Uh, a little OK, feedback. so here's a question. Uh, maybe try adding a dash dash verbose. I'm just literally guessing what might exist in, in terms of features. Um, OK. Oh, it does not pass. It does. Yeah, yeah it did. OK. Because <laughs> let's see, the error is a TS error. Yep. Um, so I guess let's ask the internet, uh, How can we get can we get TypeScript to Print a list of files as it compiles them, or something. Because yeah, I'd kind of like to see a, get a warm, fuzzy feeling. And since we turned off, uh, like we, we it's such a no emit, so it's not like it made a bunch of files we can go inspect. Um, I just, I'd really like to know. Is this all the options? Yeah, that's gonna be gross. Yeah, I, I, nah, nah, nah. I'll have it in my what, base buffer. Just what else do we have? If you keep like maybe, the only maybe word, try the word diagnostic. Maybe try the word diagnostic. Okay. Uh, are there, wait, that seems like a better choice, or at least a less worse choice. And I kind of wonder if there is a um, just like some other option to list them or something. I mean, it really seems like list list files. Yes, yes. How about just list files? That seems like a good choice. That's a capital F. Okay. Oh, okay. No, that's... Well, that's, well, that's it's just saying it used some types, which is cool. The question is, did it do any code, or did it yeah, only do types? There. Cyperspect TS, Cyperspect TS. Okay, yeah. then on line 14, yeah, so... I think you can just say slash Cypress slash startup TS. Because I think we're actually asserting if we have any TypeScript code in our Cypress directories, we would prefer that it compile. Well, try doing yarn run compile and just see if the whole thing succeeds. So that would be kind of awesome. You're worried that we may have broken some of the other. Editing, like, every, breathe on a TS config, and you probably broke something in my somewhat grumpy experience. Wow. OK, uh, well, let's keep going. Uh, take a look at the, the list. Uh, let's just, shall we lint? What? Yeah, this is just like a make sure it all compiles or something. And then I think I think there's something in here about lint. Yeah, lint. So that lint. So that's looking for anything named TS that's not in node modules or more or whatever. And so that should include linting the Now we have lint and we have prettier. Indeed we do. Now in my editor I have prettier lint, which takes care of it in one shot. I mean, you're saying you made it run both? Well, the, the Prettier plugin includes, it bundles in an extension called uh, like Prettier TS Lantern. Or yeah, and I've, like I've that. used that. Yeah. And so I, I'm pretty sure there is such a tool in the generic sense as well that would allow you to run Prettier where it starts with your Lint and then applies Prettier rules on top of it from there. I, am a, I became aware of that on some project work. And have chosen to not even lift a finger on it here because of the TS lint, ES, ES lint. lint. Yeah. I figured I will let that stabilize and like let the boilerplates start shipping a really nice working configuration, and then we'll kind of conform ours to that. Sure, that makes um, sense. Uh, strategic laziness. Is the... Yep. Uh, so that linted just fine. Okay. I mean, you could prettier it. 
No, we, we already did prettier, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, we, we did yeah. the prettier fix on that. Yeah. So how about like, making that prettier fix include the JSON files? Well, actually, why don't you commit first, then we'll see how uh, many changes. It does there. include JSON files. Oh. So whatever change you noticed was not part of the... It was a white space. It was an extra line. Oh, wait. No, look, well, yeah, but those were down inside a, any directory, right? Yeah. That's really surprising that it doesn't... Do we have a ignore, exclude file? A prettier ignore? Probably. Yeah. Yeah, we do. And Not line five. Line five is okay, catching I Did that for a reason, because it like formatted them more differently than I thought it would, and I don't remember why. Now it might have just been I I didn't want to generate extra churn in the formatting. Like maybe maybe we had them all formatted the way VS Code does them by default, and Prettier is just enough different. I was like, no, I don't want to make more for people to review, which I think is legit to not do something so that well, Prettier doesn't let's... have to review it. Let's not try and roll that in. Okay. The, yeah, because this, we get this effort. Yeah. Yeah, we can do like a later effort to yeah. tighten up our our per All right. Uh, I think other than the rename and the like, the actual content review itself, I think this is in good shape. So you want to like re-squash it and have him pick it up from there, yeah, or, or, just, or just push it as it no, is? I'm, I'm just gonna push it and have him have keep him rolling it with it. There. Cool. I'm gonna do a force push also. Force push. Well, oh. I can just push to V2. I guess that's fine. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I see. Making uncommitted. Uh oh. What did I do? Oh, I've 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 actually had this is this is a new source tree bug. Okay. Where it actually acts just somewhat like the uh, we know we could never get this to yeah, work even. Yeah, we, we here's what we did. We just uh we just made a branch and then pushed that instead of trying to do a, a push this way. We just made a made a new branch. Why doesn't that work? We it we don't know. Yeah. Just hit, hit branch up there. It's easy. I mean, it's, it's easier than fighting it. It's it's trying to help. But it is. Yeah, it used to automatically apply what? that name what? also. Oh man. Yeah, so I don't know why it has decided that it's just gonna <laughs> fall over. Literally more work than command line. Yeah. No, that's what we did last time. We actually fell down to the command line to do the push. Well, wait, wait a second. 